Yes, sir. I have a question about identity, and I'd like to approach it from two ways. Yes. The first is, at the end of your book, The Art of Contemplation, there is a saying, egoless people have very strong characters. Yes. Okay, then, there are two senses of the word identity. The first is kind of a, a separateness. We say that when we mean getting our identity together. Yes. Where we become separate. Yes. The second meaning is kind of in the sense to identify with, to become one with. And that's the sense of identity which mystics usually talk mm -hmm, about. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to know, is sense one, a strong sense one, necessary to achieve a strong sense two? Aha. Now, I hope you all heard this question. No. All right. Now, he's raised the question of two meanings of the word identity. The first meaning is the separate identity that each one of us tries to find in the course of our education where we know who we are as an ego. The second sense is to be identical with the universe as the mystic discovers that he is. Excuse me, ladies, for using the word he, <laughs> but it's shorthand. Don't forget that the word man doesn't mean male. Uh, <laughs> it comes from the Sanskrit manu, from which we get manas mind and the Latin manus hand, handy, has nothing to do with sex. So these two senses of identity, the particular, who I am, and the fact that I also realize that I am finally identical with what there is, you know, with the whole thing that's going on. I mean, the two go together. They're not antithetical in any way. The more, the first, the second one, the second one is basic, because that's the way you felt when you were a baby. You had what Freud calls the oceanic feeling. And you knew that you were, you didn't have words to put it in, but you knew that you were this jazz, whatever it is that is. And you made no distinction between the knower and the known, the voluntary and the involuntary, the doing and the happening. It was just this jazz. You knew that perfectly well as a baby, but then they came and put it on you uh, that you were different. See, they wanted you to be something particular. And well, so you learned that. Well, they put it on you so heavily that you forgot the first thing. So, but the, the whole point of sanity is to have them both at the same time. It's just the same as, as I described, the white paper behind the print, the mirror behind its reflections. Because if you don't get both going at the same time, you get a kind of myopia of getting, uh, not being able to see the forest for the trees, of forgetting your own origin. And if you forget that you, each one of you, is an incarnation of God. If you don't know that, you will try to become God by effort, and therefore will become impossible, a demon, an aggressive, obstreperous nuisance. <laughs> but if we all know that basically we are God, and I don't mean God in the uh, grandfather sense of the Judeo-Christian image, which is an idol, but in the sense that we can't define. See, you can't define yourself just like you can't bite your own teeth. You don't know who you are. In, in terms of our lived experience, we are simply consciousness and its contents. Now, it's very easy to get confused about this because scientists and philosophers spend a lot of time trying to understand consciousness in third-person terms, in terms of brain processing, for instance. And, you know, all the science of neurology is trying to go out and make out what is finally consciousness in here, what is the brain all about, and they don't know. And they're the people, most of all, who know they don't know. We don't know, because each one of us is an aperture through which the universe is observing itself. But the reality of consciousness is first person. Now, when talking about this, I, I like to use the philosopher Thomas Nagel's formulation that a creature is conscious if there's something that it's like to be that creature. Now, this, this gets at this, this split between first and, and third person. It's a, whether or not we can judge a creature to be conscious from the outside 
is never quite the point. The reality of whether or not it is conscious exists on its own side. Is a cricket conscious? If you could trade places with a cricket, would the lights go out? Would it be the same thing as trading places with a ham sandwich? Okay. I don't know, but the truth about whether or not a cricket is conscious exists on the side of the cricket. Okay, only a cricket knows for sure whether there's something that it's like to be a cricket. And even if we fully understood how consciousness emerges in the world, and we could answer this question, that still would not change the irreducibly subjective first-person character of consciousness. But of course, it couldn't observe itself completely and totally, because that would be a bore. To understand absolutely, to be totally in control of everything, would be like screwing a plastic woman. Who, who wants that? See, all, always there needs to be an element of mystery. So the thing that is, is mysterious to itself. But not completely. Because if it were completely mysterious to itself, nothing would happen. That would be to everything being even. What we need is something odd. <laughs> But we can't have something odd without the even. You know, that's the nature of the way it works, yang and yin. Next question. <laughs> Again, the, many people are confused about this. If we were not already brimming with consciousness ourselves, we would find no evidence for it in the universe, and we would have no inkling of the, about the kinds of states it can give rise to. And to say that consciousness may only seem to exist as certain philosophers and scientists have done in the past, is to admit its existence in full. It, if things seem any way at all, that is consciousness. You could be a brain in a vat at this moment. You could, you, all your memories are false. All your perceptions are of a world that does not exist. You're confused about absolutely everything. But the, the fact that you're having an experience at this moment is indisputable to you, which is all that any sentient creature requires to fully establish the reality of consciousness. But consciousness is the one thing in this universe that cannot be an illusion. Let me say that again. Consciousness is the one thing in this universe, including the universe, that cannot be an illusion. So there need be nothing deflationary about the intrusion of science and secular philosophy into our lives. Consciousness is the, is the very substance of our existence, whatever its relationship to the physical world. And, and fully understanding how it emerges based on unconscious complexity will not change that.